There are two species of wax moth, the greater wax moth and the lesser wax moth. Both species are pests of active hives. However, they usually take advantage of already diseased or declining honeybee colonies and will therefore indicate some other underlying problems within the colony. Both species eat beeswax, particularly unprocessed wax, pollen, remains of larval honeybees, honeybee cocoons, and enclosed honeybee feces found on walls of brood cells. Greater wax moth was first reported as a pest in Asia, but then spread to Northern Africa, Great Britain, some parts of Europe, Northern America, and New Zealand. The species is now distributed throughout the globe. It has been reported in 27 African countries, 9 Asian countries, 5 North American countries, 3 Latin American countries, Australia, 10 European countries, and 5 island countries. It is projected that the pest may spread further, especially due to climate change. The life cycle of both species of wax moth consists of four stages. Eggs, larva, pupa, and the adult moths. The development of each stage of the wax moth's life cycle depends significantly on environmental factors, particularly temperature. A female wax moth starts laying eggs immediately after mating and continues for approximately five days. The female lays the eggs in batches and dark, out of the way of places. It takes between three to five days for the eggs to hatch and they lay between 300 and 600 of them. After hatching, wax moth larvae will begin eating beeswax and beeswax contaminants, leaving behind frass and webbing. Mature greater wax moth larvae are gray and approximately 20 millimeters long. These mature larvae are also capable of boring into woodenware inside the hive, damaging the hive body or frame. No chemical control options are available for control of wax moths in living bee colonies. Generally, a strong honeybee colony will keep wax moth populations low. Large wax moth populations in bee colonies usually result from a reduction in bee colony populations for some other reason, starvation, pesticide poisoning, failing queen, disease, etc. This allows the wax moths to become established. Thus, the best defense against wax moths in living colonies is to keep colonies otherwise strong, free of diseases and pests, and queen right. Although they are typically present in weakened bee colonies, wax moths usually are not a direct cause of a colony's demise. In general, a high bee to comb ratio is recommended for effective wax moth control. Swarming, supersedure, starvation, robbing, small hive beetles, or varroa mites can weaken a bee colony and lead to wax moth problems. Wax moths are opportunists or secondary invaders just waiting for a chance to become established and gain the upper hand. Once the colony's health balance is tilted, in favor of wax moths, the colony is normally doomed. Attention to detail and good beekeeping management will go a long way toward wax moth control. Even skunks, bears, or human intervention such as over manipulation by the beekeeper or vandalism can stress a colony and lead to wax moth problems.